I remember a time in my life where I wanted to use this gift of wrestling to be able to travel the world and inspire people. But I remember a day that would change my life forever. And I remember this day like it was yesterday. It was a Friday night. And I was so excited to be back home from college. And I was going to be able to hang out with my family. And my dad, he picked me up from the airport and gave me a big old hug. What's up, mijo? What's up, dad? How you doing? As we talked on the way home and just laughing. And he's sharing about what's been going on in the family. And, but I was especially excited to hang out with this one cousin. He used to make me laugh. We actually gave him a nickname. We called him Big Head because he had this big old head. But people knew him as that. We made plans to go hang out that night. He was going to come by the house around 9 o'clock and pick myself and my little brother up. And I remember he rose up in the Astro van, you know, the ones with the sliding doors, throw all the kids in there for football practice or wrestling. I remember he used to hit the brakes and the gas at the same time, and the whole van would be like, yeah, that was like our hydraulics. And I remember he honked the horn, and we came out, and, Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Cuz good to see you. And we're just talking about what we're gonna do. And we're actually we're gonna go hang out with some of my cousins in the next town. So he made plans to pick up a couple of friends. This guy Ralph, first time I ever met him, opened the sliding door. Hey man, how you doing, Tony? Hey, what's up, Ralph? He jumped in the back bench seat, and we're on our way downtown San Jose. And as we're passing down First Street. I noticed this car and about five guys that were sitting on it and we're talking and as we got a little closer, I noticed that these guys got up off of the car and kind of looking at the van as we were coming by and, and as we got a little closer, I, I saw the look on their face and just kind of like mad dogging the van and, and as we passed by, I told my cousin, hey, what's up with those guys? I told him, don't even worry about it, just some guys we got problems with. So I was like, all right, man, whatever. So we kept on driving, and we picked up his friend Fred. He was a DJ, and he used to do these crazy house parties back in the day, and just a cool guy, man. So I was looking forward to hanging with him. He got in the van. As we're driving down, we're almost to get to the freeway, and I noticed that there was this car in back of us. I mean, almost to the point where they were going to hit us, and, and I told my cousin, hey, man, you pull over. These guys are going to hit Rhett into us and so they pull over to the left hand side of us and I noticed it was that same car that those guys were sitting on and instead of keeping on going they turned around and they faced us and we stopped head on and, and I remember sitting there and my cousin takes off his seatbelt and I take off mine and and Fred opens up the sliding door and kind of puts his hands like what's up man you know what's the matter with you guys and I just remember my heart start beating and the worst thing that you guys can imagine happened. Out from the back seat of that car comes out a hand holding a gun. We get down as fast as we could and the gunshots went out. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm looking around and I see all this blood on me and I'm seeing if I got shot. And that car run, took it off and, and Fred rolled out the sliding door. And I look over at my cousin Manuel and the bullet I shot him in his cheek and it came out the back of his head. His foot was on the gas pedal in the van, it took off, and I grabbed the wheel because there's a Chevron gas station, and I pull us back into the Orchard Flight Park, and we're going left and right, left and right. I'm just trying to miss cars and trying to miss people, and we get up to about 60 miles an hour, we cross the street, and boom. I mean, we hit it so hard that the sliding door from the van flew off. That guy Ralph in the back bench seat, his legs slid underneath the bench. They got locked and he went flying over and his legs broke. My little brother kind of fell. Nothing too bad on him but my cousin Manuel. Because he was passed out. His face hit all the glass in the mirror and he laid there lifeless. And I just remember just trying to catch my breath as my face hit the steering wheel. My chest hit the radio and my leg. It got popped into my lower back, and I just remember excruciating pain. Oh, Lord, Jesus, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. Just trying to catch my breath, and, and I remember my little brother get out the van, and, Tony, you okay? You okay? And I told him, it's my back, my back, and he runs around the other side, and, and he's like, Manuel, 
Manuel, wake up, Manuel, wake up, Manuel, wake up. And I'm trying to look at my cousin, but my back hurts so bad. And my, my brother said, Manuel, wake up, wake up, Manuel. And I remember in the background just hearing the sirens and, and ambulance and, and, and just them coming. They take the jaws of life and they rip open the van and they take us to the hospital. And I remember getting to the hospital. And the doctor said, we got some bad news for you. You fractured your L2 vertebrae in your lower back and most likely you're never going to be able to wrestle again. 15 years of my life I had worked for this wrestling scholarship, a full ride, and in one moment it was gone. Man, talk about losing your identity. And, and I don't even know if it was that night or the next day, but my dad came in and they told me, Tony, your cousin's dead. They murdered him. I got to tell you, just all life got sucked out of me at that moment. And I sunk into this deep, into this dark pit. And the doctors gave me an option. We can do an operation and maybe in four months you can walk or, or you can lay in bed for eight to 12 months and take your chances and we'll go from there. And I remember I was so scared and my mom, imagine 19 years old and your mom had to help you take a shower. And, and, and when you used the bathroom, she had to help you to, to wash you. And I mean, that was messed up. And I'll tell you how messed up I was. I, I would go to the doctors and I had this leg brace. And you know the little old lady walkers with the tennis balls? And, and I would go and just trying to move. And the little ladies would walk past me like, dang, boy, you messed up. I remember for Halloween, my little brother wanted to paint this shell green and call me a ninja turtle. Man, it was a tough road. And I remember being there late at night and, and just in excruciating pain. And, and as I began to be able to start moving and trying to lose myself and go back to some old things. And I remember being in the kitchen as I would barely be able to stand. My mom would speak these words to me. Mio, don't give up. Son, God's got a plan for your life, a plan to bless you and not to harm you, but to give you a future and a hope. And I wanted so bad to hang on to these words, but I couldn't as I was so lost. But I had this one friend in high school named Cecilia, and she invited me to her church. And that night, the pastor was preaching about how God had the power to heal. And when they were done preaching, they asked, anybody want healing? And everybody looks at me. I went up there. They took off my brace, laid hands me. In the name of Jesus, be healed. I put it back on. I was so scared and didn't feel different. But that night, I went home. And if it was like God took Rome and said, be renewed by the transforming of your mind. And I remember laying out in the concrete and just crying up to God, God, I'm done. Please fill me. Take away this hope, Lord. Give me your strength. And I remember it was like if heaven opened up and he reached deep down into my soul and breathed new life into me. And I remember just smiling up and just knowing that he had done something that night. And I remember being there and the next days, as time would pass, I, I started to catch this vision of, of maybe I could wrestle again. You see, my mom used to tell me these things, Mio, you got to have the eye of the tiger. And I started to hear that in my spirit. You know that song, that Rocky song? I started to hear that, and I would grab like my one pound weight, and I'd be like, ah! I grabbed my little rubber band and stretch. Ah, I put on my running shoes and I would just barely try to go around the block, put on my wrestling shoes and I move around and, and be able to try to wrestle, start working out. And, and I went for it, man. And three years afterwards, when the doctor said I would never be able to wrestle again, I won my very first tournament back. You see, God let me wrestle one more time to show me that it was him that had the power to heal me. He shut the doors after that point and didn't know what I was going to do. You see, I didn't know this at the time, but two weeks before my cousin was murdered, he asked Jesus Christ into his life. So I believe I'm going to see that big head in heaven again. <laughs> my dad's an old school biker, biggest Mexican you've ever seen, six foot one plus, goatee, crazy looking. He gave his life to the Lord. He's now a motorcycle pastor with over 200 members in his club up north. You see, it all started from a little lady. They never gave up, and she prayed. And out of all that, I, I realized that God did have a plan for my life. Came down to Southern California, went to this little Bible school. My last two semesters, I got straight A's, and I knew that was God because he used to suck at doing homework. 
transferred to Vanguard, moved to Santa Ana. We started this little church, started helping at the wrestling team at Santa Ana High School. And the coach was doing this ministry, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, sports, 15 years of my life, and now Jesus. And I've been doing this the past 10 years. It's become a dream job for me. And when I realize is this, and I want to leave you with these thoughts, that what the devil is meant for harm, God can turn for your good. And I want to leave you with the words of the Apostle Paul out of Colossians, and he says this. We look at the sun and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at the sun and see God's original purpose in everything created for everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels. Everything God started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like a head does a body. He was supreme in the beginning. And leading resurrection parade, he is supreme in the end. From beginning to end, he's there, towering far above everything and everyone. So spacious is he, so roomy, that everything of God finds his proper place in him without crowding. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms, get properly fixed and fit together in the vibrant harmonies. All because of his death and his blood that poured down from the cross. From the cross. What the devil meant for harm and to hurt you and to break you, God promised that he would never leave you nor forsake you. And then he would turn everything for your good. God bless you.